A lot that goes with the option attack. And, uh, you know, we talk about championship teams. Championship teams take advantage of field position. Championship teams take advantage of turnovers. And uh, that's basically what happens this weekend. We'll see. Here's turnovers and uh, situations. Big third down right here for Tri-Valley. And Walker will get to the first down marker. But where will they spot it? Right on it looks line. like it might be shy, but by how much they're gonna mark it a half yard short the clock continues to run It's gonna be fourth down and a half a yard. They're gonna stop it Watch it again. He needed to get to the 46 yard line Good effort broke through one tackle How about Grant Fatima there with the stop right at the stick? Excellent effort on his part that might have been a game-saving tackle. They're measuring now. It's going to be short. By at least the length of the football. Well, I can guarantee you they're not going to punt it. I was and the reason I say you. that is because they don't want to take a chance on a bad snap mm -hmm. or a block or anything else. And, of course, when you have a 250-pound running back, chances of you picking up a half a yard are kind of in your favor. There's an element to this for Mark Ramsey, who's been doing this a long time, where he may t ask his team, can you pick up one yard so we can go home? You know, that's interesting you say that because there's are situations where coaches will ask their players, you know, if they want to go for a tie. Let's say after a touchdown, do you want to go for one to tie it or do you want to go for two to mm -hmm. win it? And, you what know, you're asking hands? your players. They're the ones that are going to have to, uh, to do all the work out there, so let them help make the decision. Again, Tri-Valley had all three timeouts left to start this drive. They've used one. And there's some confusion right now. It has to do with the clock. Clock was running. The clock was running, and I think I think Josh Roop had thought he had spent his second timeout. Now there's a flag on the field. And St. Teresa was acting. So you see them at the bottom of the screen. They had assumed there was a timeout called. So. Well, the key is that clock. Bill Farquhar and company yeah. are getting together to talk about it. Right now, the clock says 219. And Josh Root lobbying hard, saying, hey, why are they in a huddle, but we're not? Why are they over there? I wouldn't want him coming after me. No penalty. They're going to wave off any flag. Is that man competitive? Oh, you can read it on his face. Absolutely. And that's his job as a coach is to defend his players. And right there, I mean, hey, all he's doing is trying to ask the officials why that clock was running. Why was the opponent in a huddle? And he's trying to get the answer for his kids. I give him a lot of credit. He could also get a flag for that. But the officials, being a good crew, know the situation. And it's not going to happen This right is now. the replay, by the way. 243 is what it was at. And now that clock runs with a full 25 second play clock from here. And so on fourth and one, Brummer's gonna walk it all the way down. And Roop spends the timeout and Tri-Valley's gotta stop it. And still, there's still not any sort of clarity on this. Well, there's 40, year, 40 years of calmness right there. It's to try and watch it again to try and understand it. Now, 243, look, they're all in the huddle down here. And players are looking up at the clock. They're seeing it. They certainly saw it from St. Teresa saying, hey, our cl the clock's running. What are we, not so much what are we doing or should we go out there? And this is our, this is our live feed. This is what we showed you just a few seconds ago. Tri-Valley coaching staff noticing it after about 17 seconds. Always excitement in high school football. <laughs> now, I will say, if you're St. Teresa, you get the first down, all of this is academic. 
but upon a stop, that's that's a different story in terms of how that factors in. It really is, it no comes, doubt about it. It comes down to making one play. Can Tri-Valley do it regardless of what time is on the clock? And there's big number 33. And there's nobody sitting. three pounds. Fourth and goal, fourth and one. Brummer sneaks. Penalty flag comes out. Somebody moved. Could be St. Teresa. St. Yep. Teresa moved. I think it was an illegal formation. Let's take a look. One fifty-seven. They're going to get an offside here. It was a false start. And again, our, our audio monster ate the microphone for the uh, officials, so as long as we can't hear it. Some people say make-up calls, but let's see if we see movement here. I didn't it's see any calls. Unless that's what I, that's what, and I think we're looking at the idea of an illegal formation as opposed to a false start. Either way, they move it back five yards. It makes it fourth and six. And now a punt try from Joe Billy Geis. Actually, Joe Brummer will punt. A low snap, nearly got a piece of it. Reganold cannot return it. He won't. It will be at the 16-yard line when Tri-Valley takes over with 1.49 to go. I don't know exactly how much time, Matt, they lost. I want it's seconds. It's not minutes, but it was seconds. But still, it adds to this. 45 is my best guess. 45 seconds? 45 seconds. That's and, a lot of plays. And he knows that factors in. So whether there was confusion, but regardless, he's now got one timeout. And the Vikings.